everyone. In this tutorial, we'll be making a green and black necklace. It's going to be glass, and it's also going to have some freshwater pearls, and it's also going to have some little seed beads for spacing. Here I have all the tools and the findings that we're going to need for this specific project. We're going to need some beading wire. I have some silver beading wire here. I think it will work fine with this project. If you want a different color, they have many different colors, but I, I usually use the silver. And then the tools that we're going to need are some wire cutters so we can cut the wire. We're going to need some flat nose pliers because we're going to need to grip on the end of each piece of the beading wire. And then we're going to need a crimping tool because we're going to need to attach a crimp bead to each end of the necklace so that we can close it properly. And then in order to close it, we're going to need one jump ring or split ring. I have a split ring here because it's more secure. I, I like using these because they don't open up. And then I have a lobster clasp. And then I have two crimp beads. Don't know if you can see them. They're very tiny. But there's two of them there. And that's all the findings and the tools that we're going to need. So these are the beads that I have here. I have these little square green ones and they have little blue and black swirls through them. You can use any, any beads you want, but for this tutorial, try and get something square and greenish. And then I have these black ones too. They kind of have a little gold part on the, on the one side and then black on the other. And they're faceted, which means they're flat on several parts kind of like a soccer ball. And then I also have some glass pearls, some green glass pearls. And if you don't have glass pearls, you can just use green round beads. I also have some freshwater pearls. And then I also have these little weird shaped green beads. They're a little darker than the square ones and they're more more solid color. A little swirly but solid. And then these are the seed beads that I have for spacing. They're kind of like a gold bronze color. You can use whatever color you want. Whatever one you think looks best with the green and black. I thought these looked kind of cool so I'm going to go with these ones. I have my beads set up in the order that I want them to be on the necklace. Each side, if you can see, is symmetrical. It's exactly the same. I have the beads patterned the same exact way on each side. I like patterns. Um, my necklace looks really long, but I do have it a little bit spaced out just so it's easier to kind of see. Now, I like to make it for myself 16 inches, but if I'm selling it, I would generally make it about 18 inches unless they request something shorter in which case I could add a little chain onto the end so that they could adjust it bigger or smaller if they'd like to. So mine is probably not going to be 16 inches. It's probably going to be more like maybe 17 inches but that's not really that much bigger. So I have this pattern right here. It's just the square bead in the middle and then a green on either side and then a faceted black on either side of them and then a pearl on each side of them and then I have those three little seed bead spacers on each side and then I have a pearl to finish off the end of this specific pattern right here and that's just going to be on the neckline right at the bottom of the neckline and then I have these beads patterned off here you can set them up however you want. So now we're going to have to take a length of wire. Now you'll always want to make sure you get enough. What I typically do is wrap it around my neck a little loosely and then I add a good five or six inches just to be safe. 
especially when you're putting on the crimp beads because they're so tiny and if you don't have enough wire to grab they kind of slide right out of your hands and it gets kind of frustrating. Okay, so I have this length of wire right here. Now I'm going to take one of my crimp beads and I'm just going to put it right on the end of my wire. And then I'm just going to hold it with my fingers so that it stays in place. So I'm going to, you can put your lobster clasp or your jump ring on first, but I'm going to just go ahead and put my jump ring on or my split ring. And then you're going to, you have it hanging there. You're going to take the end of the wire and wrap it over and pass it right back through the crimp bead so that it's looped. It's looped like that. Now hold it so that they're flat, so that the two pieces of the wire are flat and they're not twisted up because that can weaken it when you crush the, the bead. And just kind of slide it up, slide it up towards the end of, of the jump ring. And just make sure you leave a little bit, a little loop on the end so that your jump ring can move freely. Then you're going to take your crimp beads and there should be two little grooves there's one closest to the end and then there's one in further towards towards the other end. You're going to use the one with it's it has like a double groove on it and you're just going to crush the crimp bead with that. And you just crush it down. And then you can notice that there's a dent in the middle of the crimp bead which you can just use your crimp tool to just fold that right in half. and you just fold it right in half. It might take a little practice, but it's, it's really not that hard. It's just that it's so tiny. And then you're just going to cut the excess as close up to it as you can. So now I have that one end finished, and that's, that's not coming off. Now I'm just going to string on my neck my beads. And you can just go ahead and string on all your beads. Okay, so I have all my beads strung on the wire, and now the last thing to do is to put the clasp on. So we're going to take our other crimp bead and just put the wire right through it and just kind of grasp it so it doesn't slide all around. And then take your lobster clasp and put the wire right through that hole. And then you're just going to slide the crimp bead down towards the end, down towards the beads, and kind of let that drop down. And now you're going to bring it back through the crimp bead, just like you did with the other one. Okay, so there's a loop. And this one I can just kind of pull down. And you don't want to pull it too tight, because then the necklace will kink up and it won't move freely but then you want to make sure that you get a good a good fit because you don't want the necklace to have a bunch of string of a bunch of wire at the end so what I do is I hold my lobster clasp and then I hold my wire with my fingers and I'm just gonna take my crimp tool and just crimp it the same way that I did with the other one And then after you crimp it, you're going to, well, after you crush it the first time, you're just going to fold it. And then just kind of squeeze it to make sure that it's, it's fit so that it's tight. You don't want to squeeze it too much because then the crimp bead can just crack. And then the last thing to do is just snip the wire up real close. Now if you want, you can feed the wire back through the holes so that it doesn't show at all. But for this one, I'm just going to leave it like this because the hole is really tiny. And then I can just file off the, the edge of the wire if I want. And it moves freely, so I didn't make it too tight. So now you can just close your necklace 
And there is the finished necklace. Let me move this so you can see it better. And that's all there is to it. Thank you for watching.